thankfully we got a, a good day here. Let me get my merchandising right, make sure everything looks good. Here they come. Oh wow. Hey, how's it How going, man? Phone case. Yeah. How cool, you, do man. How oh, you wow. doing? Elephant custom water bottle? Man, what we do is uh, we make custom products. We make them right here locally. Uh, it's all local art, local theme stuff. We make everything in-house uh, and we have something for everybody. We do do custom stuff. Uh, take a look around. I see you got the kids with you here. How old are they, 10 and 11 girls? Cool. How about some bubbles, girls? There you go. That'll be fun going around the around the market today with some bubbles. Cool. Do they do dance or anything like that? Gymnastics or cheerleading or what? Dance. Cool. Right on. We got some stuff for dance. We got some stuff for everything. So take a look and look here. Take my card and be sure to sign up for our free custom water bottle right here. Just name, email address, and phone number. And you're in for a chance to win. We're going to draw at the end of the at the end of the market. Awesome, cool. See you all around. Have fun. Welcome everybody. So welcome to my pop up shop. Uh, today we're going to run through. I'm going to I'm going to run through all the different scenarios on a pop up shop. What is a pop up shop? What are the different kinds? Uh, which ones should you vend at, etc. I got a list of questions here that you guys submitted. Thank you for that. I uh, hope everyone's enjoying the open house. So uh, let's get started with the big question. What is a pop-up market? So a pop-up market, these things have been around for a while. Uh, a lot of your luxury brands and streetwear brands back in the day, four or five years ago, used to do these things. Uh, we would see them a lot when we would travel out to Long Beach. We'd go into Los Angeles and you would see in the real hot little areas, uh, little small uh, uh, retail spaces, and they would simply move in, maybe sign up a one-year lease, and they would launch a new brand or a new product. Uh, and it was real cool. You would go in. Uh, there was a lot of hype and a lot of secrecy and a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out type stuff going on uh, to drive customers into that pop-up market. Uh, and then later on, maybe they would open a full-blown store or whatever. Maybe it didn't work. Uh, maybe it did. So after... Uh, here we are fast forward to today. Uh, you got a lot of people. We all been sitting around for the past year, shopping online, doing all that kind of stuff. As soon as things began to open up, these pop-up markets started popping up everywhere. And by pop-up market, I mean like your farmer's markets, uh, maker's markets, vintage markets. Uh, and it's essentially uh, just where you got some extra retail space or you have some space outside and you would invite another vendor to come in that kind of complemented what you were doing in your store. Uh, so imagine a, uh, like a, let's go to the pet market. So you got a dog groomer, they're really busy on this day and you would go in and set up a little small table and sell your custom tags or, you know, just kind of network type thing. So that's one type of pop-up. So let's talk about the three types of pop-up markets. You've got solo in store, which would mean I'm set up in your retail store on maybe a Saturday or a Sunday, maybe a slow day, busy day, whatever works for the owner of the business. And I would set up a little small area. I would only need something like this, maybe a table here, a table behind me. I would bring my small equipment, my SG500 and my 14 press. Uh, and I don't necessarily have to use it that much. It's on and ready to go, but that's not really my goal. I'm not trying to sit here and press stuff all day. Uh, I'm in that shop and I'm trying to network. I'm trying to meet people. I'm trying to get the word out. Um, so the second type is vending in an actual market, uh, which would be a big market with say, you know, I've got a business and this is one that we do in my business is we have a big parking lot. We set up uh, 20, 25 vendors. And then we're trying to drive people into our shop uh, and the vendors are the attraction. Third one is going to be, we'll talk about is when you're actually hosting a, a pop-up market. So say you got a brick and mortar, you got a big parking lot um, and you want to host your own. So I'm going to run through all three of these and tell you everything you need to know about them. Uh, starting with 
the solo in-store setup. So let's say how to uh, identify and secure a date. You need to get with that owner. Obviously, you're going to want to know them, or you're going to introduce yourself and say, hey, you know, I see you got this cool thing, maybe a gymnastics gym or a cheerleading gym or something like that. And you just show them your products, take them, take them a couple samples with their logo on it. Uh, it helps if you know them. Um, so then you're going to go in and, like I said, set up a small table in a small area, maybe an eight by eight kind of thing. And you're going to vend in their business on a day when everybody is there. Uh, what equipment would you need for the solo in-store pop-up? Again, small press, small printer, uh, not much else. You're inside. You don't have to worry about the elements or anything like that. You need to bring the normal things, business cards, sign-up sheets, like I had Doug sign up uh, for a free mug. I'm gathering information. I'm gathering data on what's hot in this market. Uh, what are the people asking for? What kind of designs do they want to see? What's selling in that market? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to gather as much information as I can. Not necessarily trying to make as many sales as I can. The sales will come later. Um, what to expect? Uh, again, lots of networking. Uh, sales should be steady. You should be selling products that are ready to be, that are ready made, you know, with designs. If you're in, in like I said, a cheerleading gym, gymnastics gym, sell gymnastics stuff, sell stuff that you're comfortable making and that you've got good designs, you've got good product, they're already selling, sell more of them, gather information, give out business cards, talk to people, talk to parents, talk to kids. You saw I gave Doug's daughters a couple little bubbles. I'm going to show you how, why that is so important to give, put something in the kids' hands at these types of markets. Uh, so keep it simple on your products. Marketing strategy for the solo pop-up. One, you got the business that you're vending in is going to be pushing this because they know it's going to be cool. It's exciting. It's different. You want to do the same thing. You want to run Facebook ads targeted uh, in that area or in your city, driving people to their business for your pop-up event. Um, and that's cheap, 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 cheap. Email marketing, in-store signage, in the store, flyers, any of that grassroots type stuff. Uh, that's what you're gonna wanna do to promote the in-store solo pop-up. Uh, so now let's move along into the vending in an actual market. So this is my setup for an actual market, which is a 10 by 10 tent. Uh, the thing to remember is that, you know, a couple different things. You want a good tent with straight legs, all right, because you're going to be vending next to other vendors. They're going to pack you in there. The way we do them is we have 18 parking spots behind the store. A parking spot is about 10 feet wide. This tent is 10 feet wide. You're going to, everybody's going to stack side by side. If you get those cheap tents that have the legs that bow out, you're going to be putting your legs in your next door neighbor's booth. This tent's about 150 bucks. Uh, what to expect in an outdoor pop-up market is weather. It's going to be windy. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be cold. It's going to be hot. It's going to be all kinds of different things. But you might get lucky, and it might be really, really nice, which would be really, really cool. But that's, hey, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But you need to be prepared. <clears throat> so some of the things to prepare for that, you're probably not going to have power. So a generator. Yes, a generator will run this little press and this printer just fine. Good to go. Um, you can put it off to the side as far as you can away. You can build a little box for it. You may, you know, not even want to set up and press on site. It's totally up to you. But again, it's another one of those situations where you're trying to gather information network, talk to people, that kind of stuff. So on the, uh, some of the other things you're gonna need in an outdoor market, you're gonna need a fan. Fan's gonna save your life. You're gonna need lots of water. You're gonna need to bring that. You're gonna need a way to secure the legs on the tent. We use duct tape and sandbag. The wind blows, it's gonna lift the tent, do all kinds of crazy things. We zip tie them, uh, tents together generally in our markets that we do in the outdoor. Uh, what equipment? Same equipment. Small press, small printer. Uh, you can bring a cool plate. You can plan to press. In an outdoor environment like this, yeah, you're going to have 
you'll probably be doing more pressing in this kind of outdoor market. But the big thing is, again, is selling and making context, contacts, networking, uh, networking with the guy next door to you, with the girl over here. Um, there's going to be all kinds of other people doing this similar type stuff, making soap, making bath bombs, uh, any kind of crafted type stuff. Artists, hey, there's an artist next door. Network with the artists and figure out how you can get their art on your products and turn around and sell them. Everybody wins. Uh, so you'll see some stuff. This is this would be my setup in that type outdoor market. Uh, I got stuff here that's not sublimation related at all. I got sunglasses because it's outdoors. I get the, let me show you the biggest secret in the market. Dollar Tree. So I go to Dollar Tree. And I buy all kinds of little doodads for a dollar, sunglasses for a dollar. I'm selling them for 10. I've got bubbles for the kids, three, three for a dollar on the bubbles. I got glow sticks for the kids. I got these little journals with these cool little sayings. These are my marketing research tools because what does this say? Girls with goals. All right, cool. This one says, look forward, not back. There's plenty of these to choose from. Get them all. Stick them out there. If this one sells out, then I'm going to turn around and take this tight design and this saying, and I'm going to put it on water bottles next time. I'm going to put it on wallets. I'm going to put it on these notebooks. I'm doing research, market research. I'm trying to figure out what's hot and how I can sell more of it on my products. Uh, the cool thing with the with the bubbles and the kids stuff is it gives the kids something to do while they're walking around. And guess what? Before they leave, the kids are going to say, I want to go back over there and see if they've got more bubbles or more glow sticks or whatever. You're building a connection <laughs> through the kids to the parent. And the, the kids think you're cool now. So they're going to want to stop back by. Um, what what uh, product should you offer? Again, it goes back to my old flea market days. Three, $4 cost, 20 to $25 retail. And do as many of those as possible. That would be the notebook stuff, the watch bands, the air fresheners, uh, phone cases. Phone cases are still high. You got masks. Do you want to do a bunch of custom stuff? Really up to you. Are you, really, are you that good? Are you that confident that you can sit down and get that design done and get it pressed and get it to the customer in a timely fashion? cool, do it. But are you going to miss out on an opportunity to talk with the customer and network by being tied up pressing stuff? Uh, totally up to you. You got two people, one's pressing, one's talking. Perfect scenario, perfect setup. Um, marketing strategy on this, Facebook ads, uh, email marketing, in-store signage, uh, all kinds of different, you know, word of mouth, that kind of stuff. But the Facebook ads are the biggest benefit for the biggest value for the money. You can target that area, you can target age groups, and you just shower your city in your area that you're going to be vending in with the Facebook ads. You might spend 20 bucks. It's going to pay off, I'm telling you. Um, you're going to bring business cards to that thing. You're going to do a little free type drawing. Uh, again, gathering leads, leads, leads that you're going to turn around and work Monday after the market. Um, and so that is pretty much it on the outdoor market. If there's questions, I'm gonna get to them. If I don't answer them in this thing, I'm gonna answer them afterwards. Um, but that is essentially how the, the big market works where you're a vendor in the big market. So the third is where you're actually hosting the event. So you've got a brick and mortar with a big parking lot in the back and you're going to host a market. So you'll have, uh, you're gonna reach out to 15, 20 of your friends or however many people you can fit in that, in that parking lot and you're going to invite them to come in. How much should you charge them? We charge 25 bucks. The $25 pays for a portalette, uh, advertising. We run, we spend a hundred bucks on Facebook ads for our markets. Um, other things you're gonna need, uh, it's always cool to do a food truck, an ice cream truck, and a coffee truck, or a shaved ice, whatever. 
they're happy to come because they sell out. Um, we've built a reputation with our vendors. They know they're going to sell out too. And what it does for us in our shop is it brings in 1,500 people through the door over that day. And we end up with people lined up from the sales counter all the way out the front door. It drives sales into the shop. So you need to make sure your shop is prepared to handle that kind of traffic and to have products out there that can be purchased on the go. Um, so, you know, how to put that together, how to choose a date, believe it or not, I do the farmer's almanac. I look and see what's the best weather um, for the date. Being down here on the Gulf Coast, it's so hot and humid, we stick to spring and fall. Uh, once June hits, we're done until September, October. Uh, pick you a good date that historically doesn't have a lot of rain or bad weather or anything like that and just roll with it. Um, some of the other things you'll need, campaign signs. These are cheap. You can get these at Home Depot. Uh, I buy them through my sign guy and they just say outdoor pop-up market. He charges me 10 bucks a sign. I bought 10, 15 of them uh, and I put them out all around the store, all the intersections and corners. Um, and so campaign signs, porta potty, uh, the food trucks and so forth, create that circus environment, make it, you know, make it interesting for people, have something for everybody. Have, as you're choosing your vendors, make sure everybody compliments each other. Uh, we have vendors like organic pet treat manufacturers, um, jewelry, different things like that. Something where everybody can kind of work together. And what it ends up being is at the end of the market, all of our vendors have now become really close because they bonded over that day of selling. Uh, and so it creates that synergy and they want to come back. So the next time we do a market, we're having to turn people away because everybody wants to come be a part of it. And it's just bringing business in your door, right into your shop. So same kind of uh, marketing strategy with that, Facebook campaign signs, uh, co-branded marketing with your other vendors. Uh, we will pick each vendor one day per week or one day of the week leading up to it and feature them on our Instagram and, and Facebook accounts. Hey, you know, Farm to Treat's going to be here. Here's some of their treats. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and we keep building and building that hype up until the date of the event. They're going to turn around and share it. They're going to do their own, and they're going to drive people right back to your business, to the market. And so it's a, it works both ways for everybody. Um, so as far as that, that's, that pretty much sums up the three markets. So the biggest thing is planning, 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 uh, having a clear and reasonable goal, uh, and executing the plan. Uh, you can't plan too much. Um, little things, ice chest, uh, comfort stuff. You need a chair. Um, just the thing is, don't be scared to go out there and do it because you're, it's just a networking event. Every, all of these pop-up markets are an opportunity for you to talk to people, gather information, find out what's cool. How does that transfer into your transfer business? Um, what can you gather from your customers and the attendees of the market that you can translate into dollars by selling stuff that they actually want? Uh, there's, you know, again, no such thing as over planning. Uh, make sure to thoroughly think through your plan, cover all the bases, and have a backup plan for when things go wrong. Um, you're going to need to think about, okay, if the weather just bottom falls out, am I going to refund everybody's money? Or are we going to try and run it? Uh, just different logistical things. You're going to need to, to plan for the worst and hope for the best. And that means you're covered. Everything is covered. Um, so I'm going to run through and make sure, do we have any questions that need to be answered? A simple uh, Home Depot generator, I don't know, what, 1,500? What's a good generator? Generators, yeah, can, be, generators can be pretty costly, especially the quiet ones. Yeah, they're about a thousand bucks. We bought, we all have generators down here because we're in hurricane country. Um, 
But again, you can build a box for it. You can push it over further over to the side. The food truck's gonna have a generator running. The ice cream truck's gonna have a generator running. And again, it falls back to, do you wanna press products there or do you wanna sell stuff that's pre-made? As you begin to dial in your business and, and figure out what is hot and what's selling, you're gonna have more of that product on the table and you're gonna be selling it because you know what the people are gonna want. You're at a car show, you're doing Corvette stuff, Mustang stuff, all that kind of thing. But when the, somebody comes, you see all my signs here, ask us about custom products, yes we do. That's when you're gonna talk, you're gonna get the info and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna come back to them because you know, Doug's probably gonna come back through and his daughters on their dance team, there's gonna be 12, 15 girls. Well, I'm not gonna make those right now, but I'm gonna make them next week and I'm gonna call him Monday and I'm gonna get all that together and there's a good order. Now I got another guy doing the same thing. Uh, another one, maybe T-ball, another one football, whatever. And so I'm building and I'm selling at the same time, but I'm, so it's like I'm getting paid to network and I'm showing off what I'm doing I'm networking with other businesses, uh, and it's just a win-win-win. Is there another another question? Sprite left me. Hey Jeff, yep. can you and, talk about um, taking online payments or setting up yes. online payments? Great question. So we use Square. Um, I've tried them all. I've tried them through my bank. I've tried them other methods. Uh, the little square reader and the square app is fantastic. It always works. Uh, one thing that I did get was I went and got a little hotspot that I pay 20 bucks a month for through my phone carrier. And I take that with me, and, and, you know, just so I can run the transactions. If you don't, uh, if you want to set up an iPad kind of thing, you can set up the iPad, hook it to the, to the Wi-Fi device, and you can run them on the iPad. But generally we run it on the phone plug the reader in, I think it's 3%. You can pass that to the customer. Um, and it just, it always works. You can do instant deposits if you need to do that. Um, but we have found, I have found Square is the way to go. Yes. Any other questions? That's out, if you're outdoor, I think you're good to go. I've got a question for you. If I wanted to do, um, uh, I guess, um, printing and whatever out work, work, uh, in um, at one of the events outside and they don't have internet, and I know my, um, the sawgrass requires internet, what do we, how do we get it to run? Most phones have built-in hotspot capability, especially like the iPhones. Uh, in a pinch, you can turn the Wi-Fi, turn the hotspot on and connect through, you know, build your own little network. I did have a suggestion for that. You could already have things printed out and on a file and they can search through those things pick out the picture they want and go pick out the shirt they want and you could just press it and you don't have to worry about the print. That's exactly the way to do it. That's what I, I'm, I'm really pushing here is that doing the custom stuff. I mean, you could sit back here and spend 45 minutes trying to make an item for a customer, but how many did you miss that you could have talked to in the meantime by selling them what you have and, and networking with them. So again, it's kind of a double-edged sword. If you got two people working, that's the ideal situation. One is doing the custom stuff, one is doing the talking, but if you're doing it solo, um, I, I, I'm a huge fan of what you just said. Pre or maybe, I, I, I've done it that way, but there's quite a few people that want it personalized. They want their name and you, you, know, you have that one. You know, so I mean, you ha I have had custom prints, you know, done, but they want it personalized. Right. And the Condi kiosk would be great for that. Um, <laughs> Can't hear you, Sprite. Yeah, you can hear me. Um, the Sawgrass printers, uh, thank you. Um, 
the sawgrass printers don't actually require um, uh, internet unless unless that is your running creative. Well, sir. Can't hear you, Sprite. I don't see your mic. Hold it up to the. Hold it closer to your mouth. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's okay. good. That's weird. Um, so the Sawgrass printers don't require internet to run unless you're using Creative Studio. That's true. Which I do all the time. I, that's pretty much the program I use. I'm, I'm learning Photoshop and Affinity, but you know, uh, I, I guess I'm stuck that way. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I guess um, you know, learn if you get that. Uh, uh, start taking some classes from Dane and get that affinity and uh, maybe you can start customizing. I wanted to pick back on the first comment, um, like the the uh, open house I did at Condé in 2019, the guys had like a book, I think, and we could look at the designs through the book instead of the people flipping through all the designs because they mess up that paper. But they, if they look, flip through a book and everything too. Now he doesn't have a mic. I can't hear him. Can't hear. Come on. Now can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah, what we did was, uh, what Sprite and I did out there was we had a book with color, or we had a color chart um, that was twenty-five colors. All right. And that was the only 25 colors they could choose from. And then we had the book of patterns, which I think maybe what you saw, or if we're talking about the same thing. And they would flip through the patterns and each page would have uh, the different patterns that was available. And then they could choose the color. So they would pick the pattern, pick the color, and that was the design. If we were doing the phone cases with the monogram initials, we would do pick your color, pick your pattern, what's your initials. Those three things, I would turn around, make it three minutes later boom it's in their hand um that does streamline it because when we did when we offered everything every color we would we'd lose the customers because they couldn't make up the mind their mind on what they wanted and they would walk away and leave and they'd go buy 10 chinese cases from from uh somebody else so yeah keeping it simple uh is the key you can't give them too many choices because they'll never make up their mind Um, I see a question we may not have answered um, on how often should you do them? As often as you can. Uh, I was actually on my way in here today coming across the bay and you know we have the USS Alabama battleship uh, has a huge field in front of it where they play rugby. Uh, and so they had a rugby event going on and I looked real hard and I saw tents and people were vending. That's another, that's a great, you know, a uh, testament to you can do a pop up anywhere. Um, Oops. <laughs> as long as you've got people, people in power, um, then you're good to go. And, and if your design is focused on that event, again, like the car show, got car stuff, dog show, I got dog stuff, gymnastics, I got gymnastics stuff. And I've got my notebook where I'm taking notes, I'm getting people's information, and I'm giving out business cards. And I'm just working it, working it, working it, working it. And it's going to come back because, again, I'm calling them on Monday and Tuesday, and I'm working all those leads into bigger and bigger orders. Jeff, I have a question. You, you talked about several different areas, gymnastics, dogs, all those. Do you just carry the same blanks and just change the image based on what pop-up you're doing? Correct. Absolutely. Yep. The things that I feel comfortable with doing uh, and the products that I like and the ones that sell, that's the ones I'm doing over and over. Same product, different designs. Um, again, you know, the journals are hot right now. The masks were hot. Um, just the tumblers, of course, hot, hot, hot. Uh, the wallets, air fresheners, watch bands, just the, but I'm just keeping it simple. These are the things I know are selling and these designs I know are selling. That's why I was saying with this, 
the, the testing the waters, you know, with the pre-made stuff that's not even sublimated. I'm just trying to get a feel for what people, you know, it goes back to the old live, love, laugh thing, which is kind of a joke now that people kind of make fun of that, but whatever, man, how much money was made off of that little phrase? You know, you go into Hobby Lobby and places like that. It was everywhere. You could put that saying on anything and you're guaranteed to sell it. So uh, yeah, whatever products are cool, whatever uh, artwork is appropriate, that's what I'm putting on it and I'm rolling with it. Do you limit yourself to the amount of goods that you take with you, either blank or ones that are already decorated, like the ones that are in front of you on your table? Um, yes, we, well, we used to stock pretty heavy when we were doing the flea market. Um, and so, you know, you're gonna need to calibrate it for the size of your event. But, you know, again, if you're not pressing all of it or you run out of stuff, you're not really, you're not really losing anything because you're getting that lead that you're gonna work. Um, I would definitely take, uh, I would talk to other vendors, you know, if it's an established market that runs all the time, kind of get an idea how many people are gonna be through there. Um, but to start out again, I would really focus on putting out designs geared at the event and the crowd that's gonna be there uh, and see how it goes and see how the response is. You don't have to make a killing in sales at every event um, because the, what you're gaining is far greater than the than this. You know, okay, I'm gonna do a thousand bucks in sales on this Saturday, or you know, I'm gonna do five hundred bucks in sales, but I got fifty or a hundred leads. That's gonna lead me to five thousand dollars worth of sales because I'm gonna work those leads. I have a question. What software do you use for your leads to input all of your data that you're collecting? From Fantastic the question. Great question. I use a free app called HubSpot, H-U-B-S-P-O-T, HubSpot. It is phenomenal. That's how I put all of my leads in, and that's how I send all my emails through that software. I can put uh, name, phone, what they bought, uh, I can put them in groups. I could say, okay, all of these, these 50 people or 100 people came from the dog show. These 100 people came from the car show. And I can then tailor emails based on whatever that event is and just click a button and boom, it sends them to that particular group. I can send blanket emails to all the customers. Uh, it is free, works on PC and phone. I do both keep the app on my phone. I'm, as I'm writing them down, I'm entering them in when I've got time. I go home, I reorganize them on the computer because it's you know, just easier to work with a bigger monitor. Um, HubSpot, great, great free app. There's upgrades. I don't even use the upgrades, don't need them. Um, Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It is a great thing. We've been using it for years. I have so. a question. What can you give us an example of your? I mean, you're gathering information. How are you gathering? Is that your raffle? And what do you put in that sheet? Name, email, and phone. Um, and and the the email part is is very valuable. Of course, the phone number super valuable. You can use SMS marketing, uh, but the email address. And if they're kind of reluctant, just say, "Hey, we need to transfer artwork back and forth." You know, let me get your email so we've got a way to communicate when we go to do your job. You know, uh, we do it in both our shops for everybody that walks in the door. If they buy something, we get their contact info. If they don't buy anything, we get their contact info. And that's kind of how it leads in. We'll be sure and sign up for our mailing list for specials and so forth. Uh, name, email, and phone number is enough. Um, that's really all you need. From there, you can kind of, you know, make your own notes. I keep a notebook. I keep a sheet uh, that has those three lines and little broken out in blocks, you know, for each person I'm signing up to, uh, and it accomplishes the same thing. It gets their info into my system uh, so I can market to them appropriately. I 
I have another question. Sure. How, how did you decide, I know that you're there, Connie, but how did you decide with your products, which ones to do, say a Chromalux or this tumbler or that tumbler? How did you decide which part numbers you were ordering? There's a lot of products out there. Uh, honestly, I just get what I like. Um, and what I see the most of, you know, if I'm, uh, when we were traveling, doing trade shows, I was always in the airport gift shops. I was always in the Starbucks and I'm looking at what's on the shelf in Starbucks. And when I see they've got a whole section of these, then I know, okay, that's what I want to do on that one more so than maybe this one. But then you go to the gift shops and you see stuff like the notebooks, keychains, things like that. And I'm just going through the, the product list and picking out the coolest ones that I think uh, easiest to, to produce, um, simple, not a lot of putting it together or anything like that. I like to keep everything really simple uh, and, and to be able to do it over and over and over again the same way. Uh, and it's just kind of a gut thing, but really just always be observing. Look at what the big guys are doing because if they're selling that stuff, then you can sell it too. Um, and you've got the advantage because you can put their stuff on this stuff. Um, can't do that in Starbucks. Do you happen to have a list of the products that you use there at Condi? I can make Did you, you a list of what I've got out here, what I feel is, the, is what's hot for sure. Yeah, because you also know what prints well and how that prints and that's a great benefit. Thank you. Absolutely. I've got a question for you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, there I know I see a lot of trademarks, a lot of um, copyright. How did they get away with it? I know I don't do it, and I'm afraid to even attempt, but I see it posted all the time. Um, and I've seen it at these events as well, and you know they're copyright. You know, I get, and I, and I don't even know if I should say anything, but um what would you do on something like that um i take the approach of live and let live kind of thing um hey they're doing it now but you know i don't know what they got going on in their situation and at the end of the day man it might be feeding their kids okay whatever but it's really i make it none of my business i don't necessarily agree with it but, you know, as, as an artist who've done, I've done, you know, y'all guys know I do murals and stuff like that and paintings. I see that stuff pop up uh, on different things. And I just kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of is what it is. People are always going to, if, if somebody local isn't copying it, then China's going to be copying it anyway. So right. I don't agree I with it. I don't think it's cool, but I kind of just keep moving in my lane. You know what I'm saying? But I get uh, yeah, but I guess I'm the type of person that would probably be my lucky day that I would get nabbed at and find, that's, you know, and I'm not rich, so. Yeah, that's, you're exactly it. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to pay the price, but, you know, if somebody else wants to do it, good for them, but it, it's probably, they're going to, they're going to do the wrong thing one too many times and it's going to catch up with them. Um, and, and again, that's their business. <laughs> but I'm going to separate myself from it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to recommend it or do it. My model is do Thank what your you. check can afford. What's that? I said, my model is do what your check can afford. There you go. Anyway, Great thank advice. you for all the, thank you for all the information. It's been amazing. I've really enjoyed this whole event. Thank Absolutely. You. I'm glad I have a, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, how do you overcome when you're asking your customers for their information um, to give you their email? Because so many people are like, Ugh, I just I, I, I'm not giving my email out. How do you overcome that? Honestly, the phone is a, is a better for me at this stage of the game. I'd rather have the phone number um, because I will text you. And in fact, I may text you while you're standing there. If I have nothing else to do. Hey, let me text you real quick. Here's my number. You know, I give I always tell them. This is my personal cell phone. You call me if you have any questions. And that kind of breaks it down. And they're like, oh, well, he's willing to give me all his info. I'll give him mine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, 
always give them something back. I'm going to do something for you. If you give me your info, you know, one, I'm going to give you mine. Two, I'm not going to spam you with a bunch of stuff. And, and again, look ahead and make it as if, you know, we're going to be working together in the real near future. So go ahead and give me your contact info. So when we begin to work together, there's no, no the ball's not going to get dropped. You, you, can, you get what I'm saying there? It's a, uh, you know, I, I've already built that working relationship with that customer or that prospect before they walk away to where they feel like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm working with Jeff. We're going to make this thing. I'm not sure what it is, but we're going to do something. He's got all my info. I've got all his info. Everything's groovy. And if they don't want to give it to you, cool. Just give me your, you know, phone number and name. But okay, rarely, thanks. rarely, if ever, does that happen. Again, the, the big icebreaker and the what smooths it over is here's all my info. Here's every every way possible to contact me. Um, just give me these two little things of yours. And, and going back to the HubSpot uh, customer management system, uh, there is an unsubscribe feature. In fact, if they unsubscribe, I don't even see it. It just unsubscribes them. Uh, so if you're doing email marketing through HubSpot, they handle all that for you. If, if you send an email and a customer clicks the unsubscribe button, they automatically, there's nothing for you to do. You don't need to go in there and go, oh, how many unsubscribes do I have today? It's all automated. Do you use any type of order forms for your products or like are they specific for any uh, type of products? Not really. When we were at the flea market and the volume was crazy, we had a little form which, we, which had the numbers. When I uh, go back to the colors, the designs, and the initials, we would write, uh, you know, the background color 23, the design was number 14, and the initials were JRB. And so it's just a little form, and we'd throw it down, type the stuff in, and then tear it off and stick it in a box. And that was kind of how we kept track of how many sales we did for the day. Um, oh, it's just okay. like a little pick, like a little work ticket, you know what I mean? Just oh, okay, pack. thank you. Yep. Um, it was essentially that on a clipboard uh -huh. with, with three lines, and that was it. I would fill it out. I would walk back, laptop, make the design, take it, and I had to, I would toss it to the side. Or oh, okay. and I would kind of count them at the end of the day. Oh, right. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I've got a question here from pre-show. Uh, do you suggest partnering, partnering with other vendors or doing a standalone? Um, I think that's kind of a, you know, I don't know. It's kind of up to you. Um, if you think you've got the room for it, there's no reason at all you couldn't partner up with a friend who does something that, again, you want eyes on you. So if you've got a friend that can set up here in your booth beside you, kind of a pop-up in a pop-up, um, if they pull a crowd, man, bring, do it, you know? Um, even if it's say, you know, Doug's going to come and do his T-shirts. He's got this huge following on his, his T-shirts. Cool, set up right here because all these people that are coming to look at Doug's T-shirts, I'm right here, you know? I'm talking to them as well. They're milling around in this area. Uh, no reason at all not to do a pop-up in your own pop-up. Is there a way to contact you should I have a question in the future? Yep. J-B-U-T-L-E-R at condi.com. J-Butler at condi.com. Always you. checking it. Thank you so much. Um. Another one asking about must have items in, an, in the outdoor market. Um, great question. Again, I'll run through real quick on this tent setup. Uh, down here on the Gulf Coast, man, we get wind. You gotta weight these legs down to keep this tent on the ground. And duct tape and <laughs> zip ties. Lots and lots of zip ties, duct tape, fans, water. Um, a chair, uh, sandbags on the legs. Again, I'm using the tent with straight legs because I don't want to encroach in my neighbor's area. Um, it's easy to take down, easy to put up. Um, 
but duct tape and zip ties, you cannot have enough of them because you'll use them for everything. Tying stuff down, taping stuff down, putting signs out. Uh, these little goofy signs are another miracle type thing. These come from Dollar Tree, a dollar for 30 of them, I think. These work, <laughs> you know, I'm not a fan of the design by any stretch of the imagination, but they work. They work in our stores. We do this on the counter uh, and we pick up so many add-on sales at checkout because this kind of is different from this. You know, this, this is an, it eliminates the thought process in the shopping. So if customers are in my shop and they're shopping, they're thinking and they're thinking, do I need this? Does this work, et cetera. When they come to the counter or when they're ready to, to purchase, they don't want to think about shopping anymore because they just thought about it for 30 minutes or whatever. And this just kind of guides them along. Uh, and I read somewhere and I started doing it, just putting goofy little sayings on it, handwritten, uh, you know, cheap sunglasses for your eyes. Sounds goofy. It works. They'll buy it. Um, so these are cheap, easy to use. Uh, make it, you know, make it easy for somebody to buy stuff from you. Put signs on everything. Answer all the questions to where now you're just asking the question of how do you want to pay me? Cash, credit, whatever. Uh, another thing, take Venmo, take PayPal. Um, as many payment methods as you can. Venmo is great. Uh, PayPal, own, PayPal owns Venmo. Um, I tend to like Venmo better. It's a little quicker on the fees are less. I think the maximum transfer fee on a Venmo is 10 bucks. Um, if you get a thousand dollar purchase, it's $10 to transfer the money to the bank. Whereas PayPal, I think is still a, a percentage fee. But um, make it easy, maybe, you know, maybe have a sign out with all your payment methods. We take everything. Um, make it easy for them to buy, easy for them to, to move through the sales process. Can you do it? You can um, sign up for Linktree for free and get a QR code that yep. has every single one of your website, social media, payment methods, and everything on there. Absolutely. Great idea. Um, I even saw something the other day. It's a little piece you put in the back of your phone case and you can transfer contacts, something, some kind of new thing, but, but that's an excellent idea. Uh, QR codes all over everything. Have people scanning them as they're standing there. What site was that again with the QR codes? Link tree. Link tree. Thank you. Uh, you know, another question, what are the best venues to search for a pop-up shop that won't break the bank? You really shouldn't be paying more than 20, 25 bucks to vend. Um, you can, I mean, a lot of your Christmas Jubilees are gonna be outrageously expensive. Um, again, we host them. We've worked them, but now we host them and we charge 25 bucks and that's it. And it's essentially uh, advertising and, and for the portalette, which is a hundred bucks for the, for the day. Um, but our goal is to drive traffic into the store. And that's why we do it in the back, in our big parking lot out back. People come right through the store, right out the back door to the market. Um, but if you're talking, you know, it, it really, you're just going to have to weigh your, your business and what you can afford and what, what is the outcome. Um, again, it all goes back to that proper planning. You know, car show may want a hundred bucks because they know there's going to be 10,000 people there. Well, man, a hundred bucks for 10,000 people walking by your booth. That's a pretty sweet deal. Um, so plan accordingly on that. Gymnastics, gyms, that kind of thing shouldn't charge you anything. Um, make them a bunch of stuff for their kids in, in the gym. Um, make a deal, you know, make deals. That's where that networking comes in. Can we go back to the QR codes a minute? I'm not understanding putting QR codes on each product. Does that mean uh, that it's like a self checkout? No, I would do just a QR code, like on a piece of paper or, or a sticker and have it on the table in different places where they can scan it. And like she was talking about with the link tree. So, you know, here I've got a little sign here I could have a QR code and they could just scan it. And then there's all my contact info, social media, different things like that. So not necessarily a QR code on every product, just a QR code with your general information um, that they can scan while they're standing there. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, ma'am. Talk a little bit about how you would approach a company to set up inside or outside their business. Yeah, how to how to how to get them to do it is I, I missed the very first part. Yes, just how you would approach them to say I'd like to do a pop up connected to your business. Right. Um, the the best way to 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 begin to do that is is you know have a friend that's got a business. Um, that you can just say, hey, let me set up in your place, um, you know, and, and you may think that I don't have a friend that has a real business that works with my thing. A hair salon is a great pop-up opportunity. Um, they've got a lot of room in there, um, so it could be anything, you know, your hairdresser, hey, go to them, say, hey, let me set up a little table and put my stuff on it, and I'll hang out with you on a Saturday or a Sunday or a Monday or whatever. Um, just make it, uh, it's a lot easier now, I think, because these things are so popular. And I mean, there's one every weekend here somewhere. Um, and people know that it's, it's an exciting thing. You know, it's something new. It's, it, uh, it brings a whole nother element to their business. And at the same time, make them some cool stuff for their business. But, uh, you know, anybody you're doing business with, a dog groomer, a hairdresser, uh, you know, a dance studio, um, anything, even tattoo shop. We have a, ta a big tattoo shop across the bay, in my neck of the woods. They do huge pop-up markets and it's all kinds of cool stuff. So any, anybody can be a good host, but anybody you do business with, just take a look around their shop next time you're in there and think, man, they got a whole area back there in the back where nobody's at. Let me throw it out there and tell them, hey, I'll make you a couple of tumblers and, you know, some other stuff. And let me come set up and see how it goes. I have a question. First off, thank you so much for doing this. How sure. fast is your setup and breakdown time with everything you have in your tent? Because it looks like you have a lot of things. So are you talking an hour on the front and on the back? Come at, on. The, at the most. I can this tent comes down in about 30 seconds. I pop the middle and shove it together and that's it. So that's the tent. Everything else would be, I get those, the lugs with the flaps that open up and I just pack everything in it from one end to the other, slide them to the side. I, if I was doing a generator, I'd have it shut down and cooling off, press shut down, cooling off. Um, these can even fit, the printer will fit in a tub. That's how we stored them at the market, at the flea market. Pull the tablecloths, you know, I can shove them under the empties. I can take the empty tubs and stick them under the table. So when it's time, to, you know, the market's over at four, at 3.30, I'm pulling them out and staging everything, getting ready to load it up and go. But generally 30 minutes, max. One, one question, where do you get your nice tablecloths from? Does Condi sell them or print we them? Or, we ordered these. They are sublimated, but we didn't do them, but we ordered them and I'll get with Todd, our trade show guy, and find out where he got them. But they're really nice. They hold up really well. We Great, use these I, had, the trade or, show. I ordered some from China, but they're not as vivid as those. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Thank you. There are companies here in the States that do them. For oh, imprints yeah. is one of the biggest, largest known ones. Yep. Imprints? But there, I think theirs is more like vinyl for oh, imprints. You see their commercials. Oh, okay. They just got the Washington uh, football team contract. Yeah. Well, I'm in New York. Also, They're not, they don't sell show too many commercials like that up here. Yeah, but it's nice have having your logos on the front. That way you don't have to hang stuff from here and block your, your view. But you could certainly put something in the back. Um, if you got a buddy with a sign shop, uh, maybe talk to them. But I've seen packages keep popping up on Facebook uh, ads for the big signs that you stick in the ground. They flap around, you know, and they have like these packages for 300 bucks where you get, you know, two of those, four of these, a couple tablecloths, whatever. Um, just search around, but it's outdoor point of purchase type stuff. Like, you know, a lot of the phone stores do them. Um, they'll have them out front. All right, Jeff, uh, I believe your time is up. I want to thank you so very much. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I see tons of comments 
Um, I will go through and make sure all the questions get answered. I've given my contact info. Feel free to email me. Uh, any questions, anything I can do to help. Um, and other than that, I hope it was helpful and I hope you guys get out there and, and do it. Remember the key is, is that don't worry about the dollars right now, worry about the, the connections and making the connections and, and working those contacts and leads. And that's gonna be so much more valuable than, than the dollars that are coming in right now, that'll come. And then pretty soon, these markets will be just like clockwork. You can just put it out and you know you're going to make this much money. You're going to get this, this many leads. Um, it's a journey. You know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So slow and steady, build, 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 branding, 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 put your brand on everywhere on everything um, and build your network and roll with it. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Bye. Thank you all.